that's your birthday day dream glitter bug yeah uh there are prizes for people who are in the bracket so uh you know the the first part of the tournament a little bit difficult to cover prizes for everybody maybe one day when we become the mega kuso actually please never become a mega kuso okay uh but if if we make it there one day then maybe we can buy prizes for everybody yeah and there are no registration costs i'm sorry i can't I... so pobre yeah i'm poor you know i think that we have somebody who is rich in spirit though who's gonna be giving out the next game please welcome on in the one and only tristan Oh, he's a little egg, but he has three tails. His name is Tristan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Their name is Tristan. Hello, Tristan! Hello. Were hey. you channeling your inner home store runner again? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, what do you think? <laughs> Maybe I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> oh, Tristan, it's good to have you here. Yeah. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. It's, uh, you know, we're, we're heading into September and, and all of this is still going on, but, you know, I'm doing what I can do. I'm doing all right. You know, I, I think things are, uh, especially after all of the fun stuff with uh, school going on, uh, once all of the kids either become immune or start staying at home, I feel like that is when we're gonna start getting things a little bit back to normal. That, that's my... Yeah. So soon-ish. I know I, I have... actually tried to, uh, to upgrade my webcam the other day and I went shopping for one. It's like, why are all the webcams sold out? And then it hit me. Justin's yelling at me to eat the food uh, that he brought me. And I, I know, but we're... I'm doing the... I'm, I'm getting ready for this last match. Uh, speaking of that, what game do we have? We have... Um... Number three on my veto list today, so we moved down a little bit and got close to nukes, but not quite. Uh, a little bit of a, a classic. The first ma uh, the first game I played in Cusco Grande 3, so I, it has a warm spot in my heart. Uh, Packy and Marwan. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is certainly a video game. I'm not... I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to say anything bad about the game. It's definitely a game that's about diabetes. Uh, definitely. Yeah, simply put, if you're an elephant, you're probably already dead. <laughs> well... <laughs> Why are elephants watching my video game stream? This isn't for you, this is for the children. Well, these elephants are children. Stupid children elephants. Not my fault. Children elephants ate too much sugar. Now they need some help. That or, you know, they, they could have genetically just gotten... Di could be type 1. Probably type 1, actually. Kids don't usually get type 2 diabetes. No. If anybody should have, it probably should have been me. Oh my gosh. I don't know why, but my family was like the opposite of health conscious when I was growing up. I already told stories about what my dad ate for snacks. You know, what he'd do is get uh, Wonder Bread, break it up, put it in a bowl, sprinkle some sugar over it, pour milk on it, and then eat it. Oh. And that was, that was what he would eat for snacks, okay? That was his, like, comfort snack. And it's... I don't know. Like... That's vile. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know, right? <laughs> like... That's how you get diabetes like that literally is the definition of diabetes sugar on wonder bread oh good the twitch api is refusing to acknowledge that we're playing this game that's for the best yeah sorry the twitch. the pre-setup for this was pretty entertaining because um i handed the game out and uh, Rail Coon got about five seconds into testing it, and he realized that something was a little off about the audio. 
Um, and I had always known something was off about the audio, but I didn't have the ear to determine what. And he was able to determine that it's in stereo and the channels are the actual um, SNES audio processor channels. Yes. Are split between the left and right stereo channels. Oh, perfect. You know what? Uh, I do a stream in stereo, so we might be able to hear a little bit of that. Right, which is why I'm saying we should use uh, Tetsuya for audio, because Railcoon couldn't handle it and fixed it. Uh, <laughs> down mixed it to mono. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. I love it, I love it. Perfect, we're, we're gonna get the true version of the audio then. And now that he's pointed out that's the problem, I can't unhear it myself, and it's awful. <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh. Well, all of them are captured, and I believe uh, we have four full players today for this game for Packy and Marlin. We almost didn't. Uh, one of them showed up at, like, the last call, but no, we actually have everyone for this one. It's a miracle. It's Christmas, everybody. It's the Cusa Grande Christmas. I yeah, that's right. Elephants and diabetes for Christmas. Again. <laughs> <laughs> I was so gonna make Faizu zombie for this, even though he played it two years ago. <laughs> I'm sure he would love that, yeah. Uh, he was not looking forward to the idea. <laughs> okay, I think I'm ready. Oh yeah, sometimes the music is just in one ear and sometimes it's in the other. Uh-huh. I am just thrilled that Railcoon pointed that out. Because like I said, I always knew the audio was off somehow, but I was a lot happier not knowing how. Uh, yeah, it's definitely like treble in one ear, bass in the other. And mm -hmm. I think all of the players are ready. So everybody get all of your elephant slash sugary snack emotes. Slash, if you have any healthy snacks, you may also... No, it, snacks of all types, okay? As it turns out, no food is completely forbidden. Uh, so spam your emotes, because I'm going to do the countdown. As is the typical when I'm GMing, nothing is true, everything is permissible. Uh, yeah. Ev everything. Yeah, that's a lot everything of sugar. Everything you're I saying. See. Alf is not a snack. <laughs> That's mean, a lot of sugar, Crash Cat. You might not want to bring that much out. Lamps? You can eat lamps. I'm cool with that. That's a light snack. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Tristan, what are we going to do with you? Uh, no one's figured that out yet. Okay, it uh -oh. looks like they're doing okay with blood glucose level so good yeah I'm proud. so here's the thing about this game and here's what i didn't tell them because when bass guitar bill gave this out in acoustic round 3 he didn't tell us um if you look up at the top left you see uh, a bunch of food group icons and numbers under them um this is a mostly undisclosed second requirement to beating the level is that when you finish the level if your food intake is not correct, you will pass out and have to do the level again because of your blood sugar. Uh, they, don't tell you, they don't tell you this until you fail the first time, so I'm, I'm excited. Uh, the thing you have to do is you have to look at each food item that's a pickup, identify what food group it falls into, and pick those up until the number turns green and then stop. So, were they allowed to go to any level? What I, I see Upstart DJs on a different level than everybody else, unless that's the demo. Uh, yeah, they're on different levels. The game it do, does uh, non-linear levels in batches of two or three at a time. Uh, the beginning here, we're going to have a little bit of wonkiness as things that can be done in any order. Okay. Uh, but later on, things get a little bit more linear. You have like a batch of three and then two levels in a row, then a batch of three, then two levels in a row. Uh, I have I have confidence that we can figure this out. It's not as non-linear as it appears. We'll be fine, chat. Okay, don't stress. Don't stress. You stress, I'm going to start yelling. 
<laughs> we have uh, mouse strats over here on upstart screen, I guess. That's always important. Well, the mouse is scary for elephants, or so they say. I don't understand why uh, that ever became a thing. Like, elephants, you can just step on it, okay? I don't think elephants are that dumb to be scared of mice. They probably don't even realize mice exist most of the time. It apparently totally is a thing. Uh, also, the You quizzes. can say anything on the internet. <laughs> the truth is paywalled, but the lies are free. True. <laughs> There's a article I read with that title. It's a little horrifying. But anyway, we won't go there. Uh, the quizzes that you can get here every now and then, you, you go to pick up a, an item and it pops up a question going, hey, answer this about diabetes. Uh, they will not help our racers at all. They're mostly for score, and I believe you can get some... Um, you can get some one-ups from it, but uh, I don't think they will be very helpful. We'll see how people do with them. Oh, apparently... It Apparently the biggest thing is that they're afraid of mice because suddenly it's like, whoa, small thing. That makes sense. I I get scared when uh, I go to go down the stairs and I see Justin on the stairs. Like, I, I get scared by everything. <laughs> so, you know, I imagine if I were a stupid, dumb old elephant, you know, just chilling there and a mouse runs into the corner, I'd freak out, totally. Uh, turns out, I don't think it has anything to do with their trunks, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, we're afraid of spiders. Yeah. What's a spider gonna do? Probably just crawl around. I'm a little spider. So, Bright Shadow is fighting the boss of this level, but as you can see, there are two food groups here that are red, so it is extremely likely that upon finishing this level, they will be told, Hey, your blood sugar is too high. Uh, you, you are having uh -oh. problems. Do the level again, you scrub. Uh. <laughs> Railcoon is eating so much. Oh, Railcoon, you, yeah, you're okay. gonna, you're gonna have a problem. Wait, so, Bright Shadow finished the do? level. Uh, peanuts give you uh, additional firepower. Bright Shadow finished the level and is borderline on the blood sugar, which means for this level, they will have much lower uh, requirements for picking up food items. Yeah, that's right. Gonna have to go on the uh, no carb diet. Come on, eat your meat. Yeah, as you can see here, uh, four of the food groups start out green for Bright Shadow, which means if they if he picks up any of those four food groups, they he will likely uh, immediately click up to red and then have a have a bit of an issue at the end of the level. <laughs> um, I love meanwhile, it. Uh, Railcoon is rocking uh, five pickups of starches, or not starches, of um, carbs, bread. Greens, greens. He's a zombie. So, a glucose zombie here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I'd say that, you know, if you're going to have a character in a game like this, maybe you should have an omnivore because, you know, having an elephant pick up a chicken leg is a little bit weird. So, yeah, Railcoon did indeed not get credit for the level because he let his blood sugar get too high. Oh, Railcoon! No, you need to manage it. I'm trying to think. Would a game like this actually help kids be educated? Maybe a win. When this was in Cuso Grande 3, it was uh, it was a race I was in, and I actually had someone else as the GM. Um, and after the race, I was like, I, I felt like this was not good <laughs> educational content, and maybe even had like straight out wrong advice. <laughs> and my roommate actually went and did a ton of research on like, and found this paper some medical doctor wrote on like how both accurate and graspable and learnable this game is. And apparently for 1990s um, advice, it was considered to be very good. Okay, but we've learned a little bit since then. Yeah, I don't know if that still holds up because surprisingly no one's done the same research almost 30 years later, right, on this game. Yeah. Uh, but 30, 25 years ago, it was considered pretty good. Good for the 90s. There we go. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> yeah, this it's it's a little out right, Shadow. Now. The answer is to keep your parents happy. Okay, if you're not dead, your parents are happy. That's why you gotta manage your blood sugar so your parents are happy. And I mean, if you think about it, what really is the goal of this of this game? Because uh, teaching kids how to manage diabetes um, themselves is probably going to be a rough target. Like, we don't want them to pass out and go into shock. And as long as they don't eat a bunch of candy and pass out and go into shock, because the game taught them not to, that's probably good enough. And then oh no, the your friend with diabetes got bruised. Give him more food. Wait, he chose... Railkun chose I should do nothing special. <laughs> that seemed to be accurate. <laughs> Give him an apple. You bruised eat an apple. Yeah, there are different calibration levels. Uh, you can go into the options menu and basically tell the game how bad your diabetes is. Uh, I told them to leave it on the default. Ah, uh, that's kind of cool. Although, I'm a little bit concerned that uh, the kids who have a harder time with it, like, are going to die in this game more often. <laughs> It's interesting because the main component of the game is don't eat everything you come across, you know, and carefully manage your food intake. But Packy just shovels anything he comes across into his face hole. Well, I mean, considering that it punishes you at the end of the level for that and that it's a delayed response, to tell the truth, if you eat everything that you come across, uh, it is a delayed response, you know? Yeah, it is. So I think Roku look... has figured it out because he just got the perfect um, blood sugar level at the end of the uh, cool. level. He just... Heck yeah. What are these sounds? <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, gotta eat bananas and crackers. Upstart's having an issue getting into the boss room for this, and the trick there is somewhere in the level is an item that you have to pick up, and it tells you what item at the beginning of each level. Uh, and Upstart has uh, not found it yet, it seems. Oh no. Well, Upstart has found a lot of muffins. <laughs> oh yeah, they're not gonna finish this. They're gonna... They're gonna have to restart the level even if they do finish it. <laughs> uh, that is a bad state, yes. I love that. Oh, Tetsuya is through. What do we get here? Wow. Wow. <laughs> so I finished this game after my race. I went back and finished it because I had this really silly um, fantasy of going and finishing every Cuso Grande game I ever got when I was actually still racing. That, uh, that didn't last long. Uh, <laughs> that lasted until Red Zone. Uh, screw that game. <laughs> Honestly, Red Zone is very completable. It's just boring once you know how to do it. Oh, I, I hate militarized games, though. I... Yeah, uh, that's fair enough. So, I finished this, and your reward for completing it is that same firework thing. Mm -hmm. And then it pops up another one that does the same fireworks, but it says you did it. And then a third one that pops up the same fireworks, except they say game over. Ah, yes! You did it! Game over! I'm getting really uh, mixed messages here. Yeah, I was, uh, I had words for the game when I saw that, because it's like a two and a half hour game to get through all of the levels. I had thoughts of speedrunning it until I realized how long it actually is. Yeah. Tetsuya picked up a pepper, which now means they fire blood out of their trunk. I, I don't get it. I mean, you gotta watch what you eat, you know? Go around eating peppers, you might shoot blood out your face. I think these are supposed to be fireballs, but I swear they look like blood. <laughs> they really do. So as it turns out, this was developed by Wave Quest Incorporated. They also developed a game called Bronchi, the Bronch uh, the Bronchiosaurus. That's how you say it. Okay. That is an asthma edutainment game. 
What do you have to be educated about asthma? Hey, guess what? Your throat feels like you can't breathe anymore. Breathe in, breathe this. And you'll be better. I mean, that's not inherent instinctual genetic knowledge. So yes, you do have to be educated about that. Well, then have a parent sit you down for one minute and tell you, okay? As it turns out, parents being involved with their kids' health is a good thing. Oh, Rosentia, the TV and video games have been a substitute for parenting since the 90s. Where have you been? Wow, well, maybe. <laughs> uh... <laughs> The parents are all busy working 40 hours a week, both of them, to, no, never mind. I'm gonna stop that one. <laughs> <laughs> the publishers of this game, by the way, also publish Captain Novelin, so... Yeah, it seems like they were really into health education here, which... I don't know. I think they were really optimistic about this helping. So, someone in chat pointed out that uh, Bright Shadow is on a level that looks suspiciously like the one that I softlocked in twice uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, it's not this one, but it's this tile set, and there is a, um, a little hole at the top of the level that you can swim up into, and once you're in it, you can't get back out. Um, and I managed to get stuck in it uh, 40 minutes into the match and hadn't been writing down passwords because I didn't feel I would game over. Um, definitely write down passwords, even if you think you won't need them. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I would agree. I would agree. So people are saying, how are you supposed to educate kids when you're working 40 plus hours a week? I know, life's hard, but I don't have children. I, like, I don't have children for a reason. I don't want to- You also do work 40 hours a week? Uh, like, I've, I've done more than 40 hours a week before. Right now, no, I can't handle it. Yeah. Like, the, the bottom line here is capitalism sucks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they tried to change the title, bro. It's broken. Twitch is being Twitch. Okay, stop yelling at me, chat! Stop yelling at me! I yell at you instead! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know what? Thank you, Twitch. Uh, honestly, though, I, I love Twitch. I'm glad that it exists. Uh, it, it's so much better than all of the services that came before. Yeah, so definitely. much better. Still, uh, I think that the intent, like, there, there's somebody who had a PhD who helped out with this game. I think there was a lot of good intent. It's just that, uh, would I play this long enough to learn something from it as a kid? I That's think maybe. The I think I would get to the point where I finish a level and don't complete it for a reason I don't fully understand and then put it down. See, I... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that would get a little bit frustrating. I was a huge nerd, okay? Like, a gigantic nerd, okay? I would... If, if for some reason, uh, people turned into mecha robots that represented how nerdy they were... I would have taken over the world as a kid, okay? Because I was so nerdy. Giant mecha nerd Rosentia. Uh, and because of that, I probably would have been like, I gotta get all the answers right. And I gotta, gotta, you know, know everything about the content of this video game. And I just would have been obsessed with doing that. I can yeah, fully true. see that in child me. So I think the intent of this, um... I read it somewhere, but it was two years ago, so I don't remember where. The intent was that the kid play this while the parent, like, watches and then chimes in with uh, little factoids. So that you the have game... to have the parent anyway? Yeah. Just take I mean, the that game the out of the equation. Take out the middleman. That was the intent of the game, as I understand, and that may have just been a legal thing to say, like, well, you know, don't learn it just from the game. It may be wrong and your kid may die or something, but... Well, s well, Billy, this is why the elephant's shooting blood out of its nose. Freaking ain't too many peppers. 
Uh, let's see. Back of the envelope, I would say the person in the lead right now may be Tetsuya. Uh, we will have a better picture once we're past the intro salvo, salvo of levels. Uh, excuse me, I could talk today. Yeah, and what if you have diabetes and a peanut allergy? What are you supposed to do with this information? <laughs> kids gonna try to eat peanuts so that they can shoot stuff out of their nose. I've, I've shot peanuts out of my nose before, but I don't have a peanut allergy. Yeah, you put peanuts into your nose. No, they, they came out my nose, but they didn't go in through my nose. It was a very painful experience. Oh, that's uh, not good. No. Oh, no boxing don't sneeze while eating peanuts. <laughs> Okay, the kangaroo died. Tetsuya, unfortunately, uh, is not doing great blood sugar wise. I, yeah, I wonder so if the Tetsuya fire finished four levels. Railcoon currently fighting the mouse to puss. Uh, mouse to puss is important, okay? I don't like it. That is it. something I would read a, light, uh, read a light novel about. I don't like it. Like, genetic engineering was not for this. <laughs> Although, Xandra, if you want to make another weird transformation book, here you go, Mousetopus. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a really bad straight to sci fi um, horror oh my movie. Gosh. <laughs> or it could be on the Hall Hallmark channel. <laughs> can you imagine? Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> uh, yeah, someone had pointed out the timer, the dinner, lunch, afternoon, whatever at the top of the screen is is an indicator of how many levels you've done, but it loops. So you go through multiple days of stuff. And it's not entirely accurate because I believe you can re-enter levels, though our racers don't have a reason to do that. <laughs> but it's a fairly decent indicator of who is on what level number. Yeah, I'd say that, except for some exceptions, yeah, it's a good metric to go by. It means Tetsuya already on to dinner, just eating up a storm. Yeah. I'm not even on no. to dinner. I'm not even through no. lunch. I, I haven't had lunch yet. <laughs> I'm trying, but I have to do commentary for this game. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need me to cover for you for a couple of minutes so you can eat? Well, I'm talking with my mouth full, so no, I don't. <laughs> oh, my close to grande. Okay, I'm gonna ask you not to do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I... Oh, what is the term for, like, a specific sound that you hate? It's a psychological term, um... Oh, uh... Like, uh misophonia. Yeah, 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 that one. I, I have severe misophonia about people, like, chewing into a microphone. Oh, no, okay, I won't which, do that. Which was really awful when Comcast ran that Twitch ad that intentionally had someone doing it. No, Comcast. Uh... Yeah, I, I have some of those sounds for me as well. If there's anything that sounds like rubbing rubber or balloons, uh, mm -hmm. I get violent. Like, I will destroy whatever's making that sound, or at least yell at it. Yeah, my skin crawls. Uh, it's kind of unpleasant. Um, that and um, scraping on metal. Yeah, I, I can get that. Yeah, there's... I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'm not gonna think of any more annoying sounds. The rubber one is the one that just gets me the most. And, you know, like, if I want to be a scuba diver one day, you know, go scuba diving, I don't know what sounds those suits make, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna really, really bother me. Maybe I'll never scuba. Yeah, that's right, misophonia. Makes it so I can never be a scuba diver. <laughs> nah, scuba suits aren't- don't really make sounds. It depends on the suit. You know, are you going for, uh, a wetsuit, dry suit? How deep are you going? 
Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Maybe I know too much about scuba suits without ever actually having worn them. <laughs> well, I... <laughs> I know some people who are enthusiasts of of scuba suits and, and whatnot, so I, I know quite a bit of it vicariously. I have an uh, uncle who uh, actually has done some... I think he's done paid scuba diving. So I think everyone has figured out the balancing your diet thing. We have a couple of people who have like a yellow and a red. For example, Tetsuya has one yellow and one red figure. And for the most part, if they're balanced, you'll be okay. If you're equally over in one category as you are under in another, it'll balance out. Oh, nice. There's some tweak to that. Like if you just go full ham on ham. breads, there's no saving you. Um, if you have like eight bread, you're done. You're not gonna win no matter how under you are in the other uh, categories. So it makes sense to a degree. Yeah. Well, it makes sense. You, you know, most people who eat eight bread in a single day probably are going to have a headache by the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't eat eight bread, people. <laughs> oh, this I fatty fish. We... Milk and kill the fatty fish. I believe the numbers are supposed to indicate servings. So eating eight bread is like just sitting down and eating an entire bread loaf. Oh, no. Don't. Which, then again, yeah, I know some children who would do that, you know. Hey, it's a loaf of bread. See you tomorrow, Mom. It's all I got. <laughs> it's. <sighs> wow. It's a thing. <laughs> you got eight bread, you got nine gum. It's just. Or five gum, whatever. But, you know, if you're eating, like, whole wheat bread, it's not as bad. And it's... I don't know. I don't know. Okay, there's not one universal solution. I'm not going to tell you you can't eat a bread. I don't know. Th this is why we had somebody with a PhD working on this game. Yeah. Yeah, what's her name? Deborah Lieberman. Yeah, Debbie, thank you so much for being educational for us. We saw Upstart there pausing to, I presume, take down a password. Um, I did very explicitly warn them that uh, when I raced this, I soft locked in it twice. Uh, and Wait. I said, hey. Hmm? Deborah Lieberman didn't get a PhD in health science. She did it in psychology. It was a <laughs> well... psychologist who made this game. Oh, That's I... reasonable in a way. It, it, was it educational psychology, at least? Probably brainwashing psychology, Deborah Lieberman. I mean, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, let me see. Uh, her research aims to understand how evolution has shaped the social mind. Yeah, tell us about the evolution of diabetic elephants, Debbie. Uh, to this end, as she implies... As, <laughs> as long as there was someone consulting on the actual medical accuracy of things i i think that's a good call uh she studies a range of phenomena including kinship altruism sexuality disgust morality and gratitude hmm. ain't nothing about food in there ain't nothing about hmm. elephants either wow it disgust. sounds like they just put out yeah. for a, a psychologist who can make something that would be graspable by kids and then this is the person who showed up <laughs> I'll do Meanwhile, that. we have uh, Bright Shadow fighting a boxing kangaroo here, or a rat, I guess, yeah. a boxing rat. Die, you stupid kangaroo rat. Kangaroo rats are a thing. It's a completely different thing, though. Okay, let's see what... What evidence... One paper was, what evidence is required to determine whether infants infer the genetic relatedness of third parties? Wait, what? I'm not going to ask questions about that one. I'm just going to let it be. Uh... <laughs> oh, there, there's a lot about that. Okay, okay. Uh, let's pass... Pass that. I'm not reading that title out. Wow. Debbie, you have done a lot of research, but none on elephants. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a PhD in elephants? Is that something you can get from Utah? 
lovely. I mean, you can get a PhD in studying cows. Why not elephants? <laughs> Wait, they s peanut butter is just the letter P. Nut butter. Oh no. It's fine. Oh, by the way, the the person who saved the world from diabetes, uh, Walter Brimley, I believe he's from Utah, and in fact was a Mormon. Uh, Walter so Brimley. That one. <laughs> he um he passed away like a week ago too. Yeah, yeah, sad. Yeah. But you know we've been saved from diabetes, so thank you. Have you ever played uh, Barkley's Shut Up and Jam Gaiden? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> that is like the best plot twist I have ever run into. Yeah, Wilford, aka Walter Brimley. There we go. Thank you, chat. <laughs> Oh my. Uh, anyways. As far what as else do we talk go. about? There are headstones they have to jump on in this game. Yeah, kids, yeah, don't do that. Properly manage their diabetes. That's that's the part where the parent is supposed to chime in. See, Jimmy, if you don't balance your diet properly, you'll end up like this. Because that won't be traumatizing. That sounds like something my family would do. I, I, the more I hear stories about your family, the more I think they just believe that trauma is the best teacher. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I don't think you're far <laughs> off. <laughs> I, yeah. Cool. Uh, wow. Oh, cool. Also cool. Good job. Tetsuya is moving along pretty nicely here into the next like batch of levels already. If you don't manage your blood sugar, you go to hell before you die. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's not far off either, depending on like... That is very sad. <laughs> yeah. That's very sad and not far off. So why am I laughing? <laughs> uh, because you have to, or the like existential dread will creep in. Oh no. The existential oh, yeah. dread for me is that insulin was like is extremely cheap and was developed and the patent handed off to pharmaceutical companies for free so that people could get it and not die. And now insulin is like a hundred bucks a vial and screw everything. Yeah, yeah, that it, it's dumb. It's really dumb. Yeah. Uh, make it accessible and affordable, please, world, please. Uh, by the way. Utah is like the sugar capital of the U.S., I swear. Because, <laughs> like, no, seriously, everybody's vices uh, you're not allowed to have here in Utah, so they go with the only vice they can, sugar. Uh, no, seriously, there are so many drive through soda shops that just sell soda. Sometimes popcorn, but... What's that? Oh, flavored soda, actually. They put syrup into soda and make Wild. Syrup. Yeah. I mean, that's basically what you can get from a diner anywhere. If you if you go to like a Denny's and order a cherry Coke, there's a 50% chance that you will get normal Coca-Cola with cherry syrup in it. Yeah, but okay, let me tell you. That's not, not what diners are about. They can have it on the menu, but that's not their entire business. There are multiple businesses that are just about selling soda with syrup in it. Wild. Well, yeah, yeah, it's like, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I, I'm a huge supporter of things that are going to uh, take longer to kill you, you know? <laughs> So Tetsuya is getting close to game over. Um, little disconcerting. I believe there is a zeroth life, but I don't recall, and it wasn't really a concern for the racers um, when yeah. I raced this a couple of years ago. Uh, I think back then we, we all took a far more cautious approach when learning the ropes in the game than racers do now. Which means racers this season are exceeding our expectations all the time because they're taking more risks. Oh, yeah. But, 
but again, risk versus reward. Is the reward going to worth be worth the risk? Will it set you back far enough that there's no chance of catching back up? I don't know. You have passwords, so this is ratchet progress. Uh, you can only be sent back so far. As long as the, the racers have been taking down the passwords like I told them they should be. Um, I think it's worth it in this case. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is such a such a day because it's you know we're educational. We're, yeah, we're we're talking about diabetes education and you zebras. know pharma, zebras. And then before the match, we were talking about um how the Invincibles is just like this giant psychological trick that Grant Morrison played on everyone. What's the Invincibles? <laughs> it's a comic that Grant Morrison wrote. And a, Who's that? Uh, this came up during the, um, oh, hold on a second. The curse match when yeah. everybody was cursed. Okay, like, I've heard of the Invincibles, but that's literally all I know about it. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if people die in it, which makes it not so invincible as you would think. Railcoon asked if we're allowed to use passwords. I, just, I had to tell him, yeah, definitely a good idea. <laughs> Fell Temp has a, a good grasp on it. Falcon just jumped on a human and killed him. I mean, if an elephant jumped on you, what would you do? <laughs> I'd die, but why is this teaching children to kill humans at the park? I mean, I mean, it's teaching children that if you turn into an elephant, kill humans. But we don't have to worry about that, because what, what child is going to turn into an elephant? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, here in Utah, you never know. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Uh, so Grant Morrison believes that the act of writing the in, um, Invisibles was him casting a magic spell that actually changed reality. That's true and not true. Kind of. <laughs> it's really hard to explain. Uh, well, if, if you're talking about chaos magic, I could buy that. Yes. Or, uh, Grant or, Morrison is, uh, what are they actually, called? Tulpas? Uh, no, a tulpa is something different. A, well, a he could have believed in the Invincibles so much that they became reality. The Invisibles didn't become reality. Um, that wasn't a, an act of tulpamancy, per se. The idea behind the Invisibles was that it was a an effigy for a concept that Grant Morrison wanted to bring into reality, and he's not revealed what that concept is, because that ruins the idea. Uh, and the entire story is constructed around the idea of this is a symbol of what I want to have happen in reality. So when people read and engage in this, they will be subconsciously lending their energy to this concept. Yeah. It's a um, uh, sub-discipline of chaos magic called um, sigil magic, where it's usually uh, a drawn shape to represent the concept, and it's completely abstract and non-representational. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, and only the, the Chaos 8 knows what it means. Oh my gosh. I've... Uh... You know the... What is it? The Coyote Art Crimes thing? Or the people, like, writing Yip Yap Yap? I think... Channeling the power of hype. I like that explanation Ooh, of Sigil. That is a good explanation. <laughs> the Yip Yap Yap, that's definitely one. It's a sigil! It is! It's a sigil! So, when describing a completely abstract art form that isn't, like, it's not even just a drawn representation, it's something like, I wrote a story and this story is a complicated effigy for this concept, Grant Morrison took to calling that a hyper-sigil. Okay. Which is wild, but at the same time, if you wrote a thing and you said, I'm writing this thing to embody this thing I want to have happen, and I want to feel empowered to make it happen. And this thing you wrote suddenly took off and millions of people read it. Wouldn't you feel just a little bit empowered to do that thing? A little bit. 
bit, that's yeah. the idea behind chaos magic isn't it you don't know why it works it just does it may be self self-hypnosis for all you care don't think about it too hard yeah i it. i kind of want to do a little bit more reading i don't believe in magic at all but i do believe in the human psyche uh and that you know things that you do can affect people in ways that we don't really understand so, like, I wouldn't call it magic. I'd call it something psychological. It's, that's but, a completely valid perspective on it. But it's also fun to call it chaos magic anyway, because it sounds fun. <laughs> this is completely unrelated to anything, and it just came up during the match setup. Um, I, I had Railcoon was sharing, like, photos of a really janky microphone setup. He you know, had to, maybe... He had to Maybe Packy and Marlin are chaos magicians. <laughs> I mean, look at them. Packy and Marlon is the hyper sigil for not dying to diabetes. <laughs> Heck yeah! And you know what? They believed so hard that they didn't die. Uh, so far they haven't. We're we're doing okay. Um, Tetsuya may be running out of magic here soon. We're we're watching and waiting to see how they do. Yeah. Well, he stepped on the robber, so that's cool. Yeah, that's fine. Gotta smush those villains, okay? Smush them with your giant elephant feet. Kill the gorilla, if there's too. Anything I guess. I've learned from popular media over the past couple of months, if you've ever done anything wrong in your life, you deserve to be murdered. So no. the robber being stomped on is fine. No, no, no. No, that's a load of crap, I know, but. <laughs> wow, Tristan, sharing lies. Thank you. Uh. No, if you've ever done anything wrong, maybe you need a, a nice swift kick somewhere, but that's about it. <laughs> I like your worldview better. Yeah, just kick him in the shins. Okay, that hurts. <laughs> that hurts, but it's not going to kill you, you know? Just get kicked in the shins and bam, you're forgiven. <laughs> See, I could be the mo- <laughs> Never mind, I'm not starting- I'm not starting another cult where we solve problems by kicking people in the shins. I... Although the rituals would get really fun. Lots of shin kicking. <laughs> Just as long as your, like, entry ritual isn't, like, being blindfolded and acting out refusal to, like, give up the secret of your order or something like that, well, that's just a little strange. No, the, like, you are blindfolded, but it's just shin kicking. <laughs> that's all we really do. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it's weirder being kicked in the shin as part of your blindfolded ritual or acting out being murdered for refusing to disclose your order's secrets. They're, they're both weird, but... <laughs> Where are the diamonds? <laughs> I feel like that's something that I want to yell at somebody unironically one day. <laughs> just, I, I felt the temptation from time to time to just run up to someone on the street and be like, what year is it? Oh no, there's still time. And then run off. See, I don't want to do that. I want to do the diamonds. Because it's such too. a ridiculous question. Like, you never hear it anywhere except in heist movies. And it's always somebody who looks like the most stereotypical robber, you know, probably already wearing a jail uniform and uh, has a mask on. Where are the diamonds? You're like, oh, oh, this is funny. You know, if I don't tell him where it is, he'll probably, like, uh... Eat, eat my pet fish or something. <laughs> that totally happened, okay? In a fish named Wanda. A fish named Wanda, they ate the fish as part of torturing the person. A fish called Wanda, yeah. I, I ate the fish in Breath of Fire 1, does that count? <laughs> yeah? Oh my, uh, let me, let's see if we can get a gauge on where people are here. It looks like, um, Bright Shadow and Tetsuya are pretty close to each other, unless one of them is a full day ahead of the other. I'll need to get a glance at the map to remind myself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to bring it back a little bit. Linker is saying they are on the <laughs> same yeah, day, sure. so that would be good. So this match is uh, three people are going home, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, that's right. All five feet of the walk back home. <laughs> Actually, they probably don't even need to walk like Packy. No, they're just there. They're home. Send. Oh, Packy gets set packing. Yeah, there we oh, go. No. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I love the blind jump through the uh, bridge into a pit of spikes. <laughs> Tetsuya's still clinging to that one life. It's uh, it's an experience here. Like I've definitely seen and played worse games than this. It, it's fine. It, it's like it, it's playable. But what would you? S what is the Kusoge aspect? for you, Tristan. The music is pretty awful. The The controls are actually somewhat decent, but just the the concept of uh, pacing and difficulty escalation and just fair obstacles to overcome isn't there. There's really easy stuff, and then there's haha -ha, blind jump into spikes, and there's nothing really in between. Yeah, you're you're right about that. Uh, I, I'd say the subject material is definitely part of the Kusoge aspect as well, which I think was already assumed by all parties. Uh, but the camera really bothers me. It just doesn't move where you need it to. Uh, yeah. Not only that, but like the controls are okay, but it's very easy to make a jump that is just not going to be far enough in order to get where you need to go. So I think Nehru found the same article my roommate found uh, when we had this discussion at Cusa Grande 3, where uh, research found that uh, kids who played this were four times less likely to require hospitalization for their diabetes. In that case, that is cool. That is awesome. I'd say, you know, maybe, maybe it's better for parents perfect. to be invested in their kids, but you can't expect every parent to be uh, the most invested, you know? Some kids may be the type of learner that requires this kind of interaction to fully um, synthesize a concept. True. Yeah, well. everybody has a different learning style. Uh, so I, I could see that. Me, uh, what I would probably need as a child is anything because I was a huge nerd and I would learn whatever medical stuff I could. I just liked. I read the dictionary for fun. I was I was a dork. I read encyclopedias for fun. Yeah, I was. Yeah. But you know, you couldn't always be on the internet back then. I could never be on the internet back then. I didn't have the internet until I was in high school. My no. my uh, living situation was very behind the times. Uh, Tetsuya gonna be uh, entering a password go. in. Is it password boss? Yeah, yep, we'll see if uh, Tetsuya has a uh, working password. Oh no. So this is how I lost my race uh, of this, is uh, I softlocked and then thought I remembered the password, because it's three letters, right? You, It's easy enough to remember. And I just dyslexia it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Cuz I wasn't thinking about the password. Yeah, I could see that. I think Tetsu is having a problem actually entering the password, which is uh disconcerting. What is going on? Let me see. Tetsu is saying, "Oh no." Oh no. How do you enter a password? <laughs> I what? Yeah, all I'm try. saying is try buttons. I holy crap, let me load this up. You know what? I've never actually entered the password, and maybe I should have. Uh, <laughs> help. Um, where the heck is my Pacquiao Marlon uh, cartridge? Yes, cartridge. Wait, you have a cart? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, oh, uh, Railcoon was actually really close to an area where you can softlock in this game, so that's also another fun feature of the swimming level. <laughs> 
I'll just tell them because I don't think it's fair. It, their controller That's is clearly fair. not correctly configured. So if it's not working for them, they need to be told their controller is set up incorrectly or they're just going to sit there the rest of the match. Yep, I agree. And because Tetsuya has given us music, I agree even more. Yeah, my guess is that uh, Tetsuya... We may we may want to decide if we want to start tracking extra time for Tetsuya or not. I'll leave that up to Kate. It is Kate's choice, but we do ask the players to have their controls ready, bound, and set up correctly before the match. So we are going to have to see uh, if it was a button issue. Looks yeah. like Tetsuya is very quickly remapping things. If you want to cut over to Railcoon for audio while uh, Tetsuya is flailing with this, I did tell him he was backup audio. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and switch over for a hot second or so to hear what we've got there. Oh, it's mono. Boring. <laughs> Okay, let's let's see if Tetsuya was able to get past the the problem. Yeah, it's real unfortunate. Uh, it looks like that's actually making a difference in lead too. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, my concern is that he may have gone into the wrong menu in order to enter er, <sighs> retro arc is a little complicated and if you don't yeah. take the time to learn and set up beforehand it can be really difficult in the heat of the moment it's weird that <sighs> it's like you don't use a for anything but password entry so it's entirely possible it was missed and set up but it's weird that the controls would work except for the a button Yeah, it works fine for me. I just double checked, uh, triple checked, really. So I think this is a config issue. Yeah. So we're we're gonna go ahead and see what happens here. Uh, we've had multiple people confirm it works with the A button. So this isn't the first time that we've had a control boss show up and it's not going to be the last. Uh, yeah, this, I can assure you, it, it's unfortunate, but it I feel so bad because this made the difference in lead in a three elimination tiebreaker. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty huge. That, I, I feel so awful. Don't feel bad, it's not your fault. I... I am very empathic about these things. It's, it happens. <laughs> well, stop being Deanna Troy and come back to reality. <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean, I like Deanna Troy. She's okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I. she's fine. <laughs> oh, she's okay, she's okay. Yeah, I'm glad that other people feel emotions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a broken controller input because Tetsuya is able to bind A to the button they want. You know, like when doing the controller config, they're actually able to to press that button but and retro. There are retro two places it. to map controls, and so you might be mapping it per that, but not actually accurately. Uh, mapping what it interprets as his controller to the SNES controller. Yeah, uh, it's not a broken thing in in the game. I, I use the exact same emulator, exact same ROM, exact same core. There using we the go. Default. 
configuration and it worked. There we go, yes. So what was that? Three, four minutes of yep. flailing? Did I really just reset the timer? Oh my gosh. I... Okay. <laughs> Can somebody tell me what time I was at? Welcome to my life. Five or six minutes, a couple people in chat are saying we will deliberate on See, if they will get extra time. This is what happens when you have global hotkeys and you have to figure out stuff to do. Oh my gosh. 50, 57, so I'm going to call this 52 minutes. And get it started. If needed, we can go back and fix stuff. Hey, I'm just trying to help Tetsuya figure out what's going on with controls. <sighs> and it's the button right next to my enter button that I hit in order to clear the timer. I should just go back. Yeah, whatever. If needed, we can go back and measure the time ourselves. Like, big deal. The timer's just here for show. Uh, <laughs> well, okay, it's it, it's here for multiple reasons, but it we can check here. the bot if needed. So the unfortunate thing is, I believe the passwords return you to the beginning of a level block. So Tetsuya is a good chunk behind now. Uh. That game over may have been costly, even without the controller configuration. Oh yeah, I would bet so. Like, if you at least know where the food is that you need for the day, then uh, that helps. But still, it's going to be a lot of work to, to yeah. get back. And Tetsuya is definitely in panic mode right now. He is barreling through obstacles. Um, if this is the right play, I don't know. I with something around five and a half minutes you know six minutes left it might you be. definitely need to rush yeah i i think just damage boosting is probably a good plan right now and jumping on lions also a good plan it's going to be it's going to be a close one I, I do believe Bright Shadow pulled ahead during the uh, password shenanigans, but Tetsuya, if he rushes, has a chance to catch back up. Especially if we're going to give him another couple of minutes. Um, I believe the jury is still out on that one. Yep, we'll find out what Kate says and what is decided on that. Oh, apparently the problem is Tetsuya had to disable player two. I... <sighs> Normally, I would say that's your own fault, but, but I didn't give them, I didn't give them a control list, and I was not very forthcoming. And hey, the A button is only used for passwords, so uh -huh. I don't. They, they yeah. Know. Again, this is why we have a referee to decide uh, these calls if there is extra time given or not. We also have the referee around to yell at me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I can do what you want. No, you don't have to. Well, I mean, I, if you really want to, I guess. <laughs> I love the disappearing, reappearing rat of doom. Like, what is his deal? Uh, his deal is he has this really sweet vest and you're trying to take it. Well, then just take it or ask for it, you know? It's also mad that he, he has this really sweet vest, but he doesn't have pants. It's gotta get cold. No, not layer two. Uh, Tetsuya had to disable controller two. Yep. Well, which would be player two, sort of. Aha, we need to stop at one hour and 19 seconds. Okay, thank you, Kate. Streaming's hard, everybody. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, Upstart and Railcoon are a decent clip back. Uh, I don't think we're going to be seeing uh, a push for victory from either of them. They've made a strong showing. They, they did about as oh, well yeah. as we did when we raced this. 
Hey, um, Railgoon managed to get through the day of firework time. Pew pew. Is Tetsuya getting extra time? Lupine One has asked. My vote is yes, but I can get stomped on in that decision by either Kate or Bro, so. Like I could see, I could see plenty of arguments for either of those. Uh, so honestly, I feel like what our referee decides is going to be the decision we go with. Don't stop, Trista. I'll, I'll try not to stomp on you, Trista. <laughs> I've got pretty big feet though. Like not gigantic, but. Maybe average adult size foot. I used to think that I had giant feet, but that's just because my parents like always bought me shoes that were like two or three sizes how, too big, you know? How far ahead is bright? I'm gonna say about two levels. Uh two stages. So I thought that I had like size 14 feet. I'm like, oh, I got giant flappy feet, but no, the 11 and a half. Okay, well, let's see here. Dinner the same day. Tetsu is on morning. Um, afternoon, lunch, dinner. Yeah, three levels. You are, you are an elephant. Let me teach you how to eat elephant food like fish. Like, well, I get it. He's just an avatar. Okay. So here's the thing I'm batting around in my head here. Uh, if we gave um, Tetsuya five minutes extra time and they knew they were three levels behind, it's possible they could just attack with reckless abandon and possibly make it up. But if they approach with his usual, if he approaches with his usual uh, approach of somewhat caution, there's no way. Well, I, w I would say that uh, if extra time is given, essentially the way that it should be given is saying, you know, just essentially saying you have this extra time if you want it. But Basically, that's if it's given. they would not yeah. know that uh, he would not know that he would need to uh, really rush to try to take first. Basically, we can tell people the place that they're in, but I don't really want to give more information than that. That. Exactly. This gorilla is being a problem too. Well, I, as I gorillas think. usually are. Stupid gorillas. Oh my gosh, move it, gorilla! Oh no! <laughs> that was close, but gorilla's down. Yeah, let's see. Bright Shadow is doing a good job through dinner. Ooh, fixed some damage on the spikes, but getting a full health refill, or is that a death and you get refilled right away? Uh, for who? That was uh, a death. Oh, for Bright Shadow. Yeah. Okay, so one hour and 19 seconds is when we are going to have time. Cadus is allowing five minutes extra for Tetsuya, if Tetsuya wishes. <laughs> he made an appearance! Welcome, Wilford Brimley! If Tetsuya takes the five minutes and just goes in, there is a chance, but I'm thinking Tetsuya is not going to take the five minutes. Which... Okay. Oh, no, nope, uh, they're going for Tetsuya it. Tetsuya does want the five minutes. Good, good. <laughs> Garrett Brimley! Garrett Brimley! We don't, we don't want him here. Oh. I actually think Tetsuya may be on the la the prior batch of levels. No, I'm sorry. There was only one left in this batch. Um, so Tetsuya needs to finish lunch, lunch. and afternoon to get to dinner. Which... And then I would say needs to get to the boss of dinner. Um, 
my gosh. Ooh. I'm that's, that's rocking out to Railcoon's music. Like, the bass is so good. Oh, hi, Railcoon. I'm not hi, chat. chat. He's not talking to me. I guess I'll just ignore it. Wow. <laughs> Can't so believe Railcoon would go and do that. This is a long shot, but I consider it possible. Oh, yeah. I think so, too. And, like, considering... Tetsu has three lives. It's, I think it's doable. Have to just rush a little bit. Just get the right amount of food, you know. That hole to the left that Tetsuya just passed, by the way, is where I soft locked. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty fun. You can swim up into that hole, but for some reason, your hitbox when swimming upward is differently shaped than swimming downward, and bad things happen. Okay, we are... Oh, I love the cat. Cat does a bad job of leaning against the wall. Four minutes left for Tetsuya to uh, try to uh, get back into first. And I do think it's going to be doable. Uh, remember, Tetsuya had some issues that uh, definitely were not expected with this game, and I feel like this call is a fair one. It gives Tetsuya a chance to get back. Uh... Yeah, the the issue was uh, Tetsuya didn't have a button correctly mapped that they had no way to tell was not correctly mapped and set up. Yeah, I mean, if you loaded Super Mario World, you could have told, but... That's a smart thing to do, but it's something I wouldn't, like, out and out require. Well, I would now that I've said this, but... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's a fox now. Oh my gosh. Okay. We're getting all the best. Uh, upstart DJ, what are you going to pull up? Huh, DJ? So we're at, what, 103.30 or so. Um, yep. And Tetsu is still on the first level of but their... it's their going push. to... We're getting close to the boss, though. Mm-hmm. Like, here we go. Nope, never mind. It's just stupid fish again. Yeah, but the stupid fish is a boss. Oh, the fish is a boss. I didn't Tetsuya know. I thought it was just a stupid out. fish. Oh, no. We're if getting Tetsuya attacked. Here, it's, it's over. Wait, you can't. Does death take you back to the beginning of the level? You're not. I mean, I don't think he's going to make it if he dies, no matter where it takes you back. <laughs> Yeah, Tetsuya, all your food's in the green. Just kill the fish. Be done with the demon. Demon fish. And don't eat the fish. You don't need to eat the fish. Fish is dead. And one minute left. Oh. Pew, pew. So yeah, the controller oops does not look like it made much of a difference. It was the game over that got Tetsuya. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's okay, Tristan. Here, I'll feel no empathy for you. <laughs> There's no, I mean, like I said, it wasn't the controller up, so it definitely looks like the game over was what cost Tetsuya the victory here, which is a shame, but that's how it goes. Tetsuya took a lot of risk to move through levels quickly and took an early lead, uh, but at the end had no lives left. And that's just how it goes sometimes. True. I'm going to let the rest of this time go and then we are calling it it was close though there was definitely a reality in which this could have gone a different way oh yeah i i think so but welcome you live by the kuso you die by the kuso that is time also please don't die by kuso everybody that's gross oh yeah that's a crappy way to go <laughs> Ah, well, everybody, go ahead, close your eyes and relax. Okay, you've seen enough elephants. Elephants? Elephants. Okay. Speaking of elephants in the room, we have to talk about who won, and it turns out Bright Shadow is declared the victor. Yeah, so how do you think about what they did? Or I, how they I, did? They did pretty well. Uh, the unfortunate thing about this game is it, it gets loopy very early. Um, just the same content. 
with harder enemies uh, and more spongy bosses. They did pretty well though, and no one managed to soft lock like I did twice. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, that was that was amazing that you soft lock so much. Hello, Bright Shadow, welcome in. Hello, can you hear me okay this time? Yes, I I'm gonna turn you up on my end, but I can hear you great. Uh, yeah, so what are your thoughts? Congratulations on your victory here. Thank you. My my thoughts are that uh, I I overate on the last level there, and uh, I was I was tired and thirsty. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, same. Yeah, I overate during most of the levels, to be fair. Uh, but that's because I had really good lunch. <laughs> oh. Yeah, uh, so th this was in Cusa Grande, you know, we talked about whether or not it's a helpful game, whether or not it was educational. There's a lot, there, there are quite a few people who were saying that for the time, uh, doctors actually found that this helped. The kids who played this were less likely to end up in the emergency room, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was cool that there, that somebody went to the trouble to make a video game for kids to help teach them how to manage like health conditions that are complicated. I mean, that's that's a neat idea, and that's a lot of effort and probably money that went into that. Yeah, I'd say so. It's not the most enjoyable game in the world, but I found the music pretty enjoyable, and if you've got good music, then you can usually look past the rest of it, especially with some of the bass that goes on. It's got a good bass line. I mean, sounds a little bit yeah. like Seinfeld, but still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was there anything that was a big problem for you with the game? Uh, I got stuck, like, on the first water level. I got duped into just ramming my face into walls and going in circles for a while because I didn't realize that a passage was actually passable. <laughs> and I thought that maybe yeah. this was the soft lock, and no, it wasn't. I was just, you know, dumb. Uh, not dumb. You just fell for one of the one of the visual tricks that they probably didn't mean to have in there, but it's definitely there. Th see, this yeah. is why you have playtesters, uh, and then this is why you uh, listen to the playtesters. <laughs> you have to do both. If you don't do both, mm -hmm. then there's no reason to have them. Yeah, the soft lock is uh, at the top of the water level. There is a very narrow gap that leads into a, a hole you can't exit from. And if you swim up through that gap, you can't go back down. Oh, no. Yeah, don't do that. And you can't see that it doesn't go anywhere until you're already in there. Very nice. Yep. <sighs> but yeah, seriously, uh, it was really close with Tetsuya as well. Uh, I feel like our other players made a really good push, honestly did as as well, if not better, than when we had this on the Invitational over on the GDQ channel. So, uh, yeah, th this was a really enjoyable watch for me. And we got to learn a lot about uh, the, the person who, that, and we talked about Wilford Brimley before Tetsuya put up a Wilford Brimley gif, so that was cool. <laughs> Wilford slash Walter, whatever, you know? Oh, well, thank you so much. Yeah, any, uh, you're going to be moving on to the tiebreak, the final tiebreaker to see if you make it into the bracket. So best of luck to you then. Uh, are you streaming anything these days that people should be aware about? And if not, any games that you're playing that you're loving? Uh, I've strangely started speedrunning gods for SNES. That was a free world record, and then I started improving it because it's actually kind of fun. So if anybody wants to come do that, please come compete. Gods. That'd be awesome. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm just trying to remember what it... Uh, I'm pulling up pictures because uh, I know that Matt we... Brothers, it's a weird oh, I... little platformer. Oh, I don't like playing that one. I... <laughs> no, so... it's, it's not a great game. <laughs> you can go ahead and keep it for yourself. Yeah, it's uh... an Amiga game. <laughs> Yeah, Amiga on Super Nintendo is what I'd say. Mm -hmm. <sighs> well, thank you so much. Yeah, best of luck. Hopefully you can improve it. Uh, honestly, I always like to see a little competition in the community, and uh, I try to welcome people to my games, so hopefully other people can join the ever-growing gods community. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a two people now. Heck yeah! That's all you need. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh. We don't even run the same category, but you know, it still counts. Oh. Hey, no, it, it definitely counts. Uh, honestly, you know, the Kuso community, uh, uh, a lot of people just play their own game and that's completely fine. I like to play my games. I like to play them the way I want to play them. And if nobody else runs it, that's probably for the better because I don't really care for competition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we're going to go ahead and raid Tina Hacks. Tina is playing Panzer Paladin, doing speed runs, and this game looks really cool. Uh, so let's go raid there. Do we have a good raid message? Like, there were definitely some from Packy and Marlin. Like, we could do cool. Yeah, let's do it like this. Cool. There's our raid message. Perfect. Yeah. Go tell Tina that she is cool. Uh, and everybody, we will be back for sure later on uh, this next week. I don't know if we're going to have a stream tomorrow just because I need to get ready for the semester that begins on Monday. Uh, I will tweet slash let people know on Discord, though, when the next stream is going to happen. So uh, stay tuned. Let's go, everybody. Bye. Take care. Bye, Bright Shadow. Bye. Bye, Tristan. Bye.